probably going to take more than a minute. I may have to make some of you. <laughs> and I'll probably say some other things that may aggravate you too. So yeah, hang on to your seat. Don't get the hook. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> uh, you know, things are really important. The smallest little things can change how things play out in the future. The reason I came to this church, I'd been to uh, one near my house a couple times, and that was pretty much it. I was there. Uh, one day, coming home, I saw uh, on the sign up here that uh, there was going to be a sermon about Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter, and I especially wanted to hear it because Chuck's mom hated He-Man, made sure she told me all about that and all the other things. So I knew Harry Potter was on her list of not to be done. So I came, and I don't remember the sermon at all. But what happened was I came in just in time and sat down in the pew behind Helen Weirich. How many would say Helen Weirich has a strong personality? Raise your hand. <laughs> She only had, while Rob was playing the, the preliminary music, she only had a couple minutes, and what she got out of me was that my name was Bev Doherty, and there's how many ways to spell Doherty, and that I lived nearby, across the street from Ritzman. And that's all the conversation we had. She didn't have anything other than that little bit of information, and on Tuesday, I got in the mail a card from Helen Weirich. I assume she either drove by my house or she looked me up on the property records to find out where I was. <laughs> well, guess what? I came to the next Sunday service because Helen had noticed me and that had not happened at the other church. They never asked who I was, where I came from. I was just like a mushroom sitting there. Uh, and on Sunday, the second time I attended, I had got down to the uh, door and was going out, and Joni Wurstler ran up and touched my shoulder and said, hey, do you like to sing? <laughs> How many of you think that Joni Wurstler is a Strong personality for your man. Not so many. I think he was polite, Joni. <laughs> well, you know what? I actually thought that was pretty bold of her on the second Sunday they asked me to, to uh, sing. But I do like to sing, and I told her so, but it didn't feel like it right then. And she said, that's all right. Next year, we start in the fall and you'll feel more comfortable then. She assumed that I would be back. I think that's really bold, don't you? Isn't that a bold way to act? Way to go, Joni. <laughs> All right. Any of you think that they were out of line? That they were too pushy? Did what they do work? I have a picture of Jesus in my mind, and, you know, they have him carrying a shepherd's staff, usually. Now, he's a carpenter, but they got him carrying a shepherd's staff, which has the hook on it, <laughs> because he saved, the shepherd's staff stands for saving people, saving sheep, helping them out. That's how they pull them in. They don't have a walking stick that you poke people away with. You know, no, he has the shepherd's hook to draw people in. I also imagine him walking around and that people would come to see or look. Maybe they weren't ready to jump in and be a disciple right then, but they would be around. And I'll bet you that he would have found out what their name was, or maybe he just knew because he's divine. But he probably figured their name was pretty important. And he'd probably know how to get a hold of them again. Or at least he could quite easily. I can't. 
I need your help. And the reason we want to get a hold of people is, you know, if they come, if they visit, don't we owe them the courtesy of wanting to know more about them? Isn't that important that we show we want them back so that they can feel closer to God here or at some other church? But that is the reason people visit a church, is to feel closer to God. So Helen Weirich got a hold of me with imperfect information, and I can do those things too. You think, well, let them get it, their name and number. Or, you know, they'll, the doorman will get it on the piece of paper up front. But that doesn't always hold true. And you're all very friendly, and you may talk to them, and maybe you find out where they live next to, or where they wear <coughs> before. Maybe you get their last name, because you could hear it, and the other guy couldn't. Your little bit of information may be the difference that allows us to contact them and help them in their search for a closeness to God. It's not being nosy, it's not being pushy, it's allowing the work of the Lord to continue. We have a guest today, she was here last week. David, would you introduce your guest? You don't have to tell us anything except her name and number. Yeah, I've yeah. already. <laughs> yeah, you can do it, man. All right, Kathy, Kathy you stand up and do it. <laughs> What's the first name? Uh, this is Erica Hude. 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 And I met her at work way back when, when I worked in another building, and uh, we became friends. Great. So we have talked about her church, my church, for a long time. And yes, I've invited her many times. Well, what would happen? <laughs> <laughs> she came. She eventually came. I thought it was exciting because she's my son's age, and I thought. <gasps> <laughs> so, um, every little bit of information that you give helps. You're all nice people. I've seen you be nice to people. I know that you have the information. This year, just remember that it's not tattling to let me know. It is, it is God's work, and you know, I bless you for for giving a good effort this year. Thanks.